final push. We can do this. Commence attack. Immediately. I need more than sword this time. This time I'll need a power glove. Where is this mess? It just ends the eye. It'll be fine. And it happened that both of them came to hey. a place where they agreed. Hey! And who are you to come before me? You bear the insignia of the bear. Yet you do not wear it as a soldier. If you think you got any chance to take you down, you're wrong. Maybe you're willing to risk some reason, though. I see you fight with words, like all beneath the flag of the bear. Let us hope your skill with weapons proves oh, greater. Yeah, now. The north going Zack said, Hey, say, you are blocking my path. You are right in my way. I'm a north going Zax, and I always go north. Get out of my way now and let me go forth. Who's in whose way? You can take the west. Holding it, though, is a different matter. I have no need to hold it. Anything the west sends against me shall break against the wall that is the legion. I like your armor. Snap the south going Zacks. They don't need to send an army. Your supply lines will kill you first. You think we would march without a means of resupply? We have the fort. We will have the dam. And we shall harvest as we move west. north going pride. I never have taken a step to one side. There's no, there's no committee supporting the West. There are many towns, many slaves, ripe for the taking. The Southern West are not self-sufficient tribes, seen in the NCR and the Caravans. I won't change my ways if I have to keep standing here 59 days. You rely and too I much on the trappings of civilization. Yes, the people of the West were once tribes. The they will relearn their ways, or... Years. As a legend, do you really believe that, you, or are you talking your chance? As a legend, do you really believe that, or are you taking a chance? Hmm. Long ago, when taking Denver, I had to face such a challenge. Many died. Oh. It was the lines of food and water that nearly broke the Legion's strength, and the lack of tribals near that cursed city. When I felt in that struggle, I felt as I saw the map of the West. The West is a trap. The bear has already been caught in it, and it is dying. Where you see death, I see change, and I see a strength. My coming would have saved you. Set your people free in ways they cannot see. War would have tested them, broken the weak with its violence. Violence gave you that strength, awakened you. I can see it upon your face. Perhaps it is unfortunate Wolpex was not here to hear your words. Something tells me you would prove more than his match. Until the day when our armies That's meet again in CR. I shall wait for you on the battlefield. Me too. Not an inch to the west, not an inch to the east. I'll stay here not budging. I can and I will if it makes you and me and the whole world stand still. Well, of course, the world didn't stand still. The world grew. In a couple of years, the new highway came through. And they built it right over those two stubborn sacks and left them there, standing unbunched in their tracks. From me. I light him in darkness. Whoa! Oh, it's an NCR! Go figure. You must be great General Oliver Lee. We meet again at last. That's a fine bit of work back there. Truth told, I'm surprised you made it out of there in one piece. Me too. You and the damn. I'm impressed to say the least. You're weak, no easy thing. You secured NCR's future. The administration sends its thanks for what it's worth. I can have done it alone. I appreciate this along the way. Least we could do. And seeing those shits of Caesar kicking dirt as they ran did my heart good, let me tell you. 
Might see some recruitment number rise. Build some morale out in the Mojave long enough for the NCR to find its feet again. All due to you. Again, you have my thanks. And all the West, too. Once they pass it over the radio, after some of the right police things. Scooby Doo! I need more from bitch and her family long ago. Over and over and make money. Yes, and it's going to make talking cat tells her how to over and over and make money beyond my wildest dreams. Here we go, here we go! What happens now? We clean up, take prisoners, watch the ease for any more trouble from the Legion. Though I think they're still running, according to our scouts. According to your scouts. That, we'll see what happens when the dust settles and how the Mojave looks now without Caesar. Something tells me we better enjoy this breather while we can. And if that means Vegas, then you and the troops have earned it. Maybe you Many traveling is in order. Can't keep the courier spirit down, eh? Fair enough. I'm kind of curious how this is going to pan out in the long run. Me too. I guess history will tell us in its own sweet time. Maybe it will. Alright, level 37. Eureka! Eureka! What? Oh, there you are, Eureka. Get ready to jot down my latest formula. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs Stop cheated right there. death once again. And the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. The New California Republic celebrated its second victory at Hoover Dam, establishing definitive control over the entire Mojave Wasteland. Soon after, they negotiated terms to annex the Strip, Freeside, and many surrounding communities. The Mojave Wasteland, at long last, had entirely fallen under the NCR's banner. The courier, fair and even-handed in his dealings throughout the wasteland, was honored by the NCR for his support of the military at Hoover Dam. He was presented with the Golden Branch, the highest civilian decoration given by the Republic. Tabitha and Rhonda went east, through Caesar's land. Occasionally, tales of their exploits found their way back west, though few believed them. Eventually, the stories concerning the duo were collected and published, and proved to be quite popular with children. Invigorated by his travels with the courier, Raoul once more took up his guns in memory of his lost Rafael. Soon after, the Mojave was filled with tales of the ghost vaquero who hunts down those who prey on the wing. With the help of the gunrunners, the boomers developed a healthy trading relationship with the NCR. Eventually, the boomers began wandering out into the wasteland, while still preventing outsiders from entering Nellis. The Brotherhood and the NCR in the Mojave Wasteland declared an official truce, despite continued hostilities between the two in the West. As per their agreement, the NCR handed over all suits of salvaged power over, and in return, the Brotherhood helped patrol I-15 and Highway 95. The peace with NCR served to ease Veronica's worries about the Brotherhood's immediate future. Still, a distance had arisen between her and her fellow members that would never be bridged. She began secluding herself in crumbling libraries of the old world, learning of promising technologies she knew the Brotherhood would never adopt. Never weakened by NCR, the Fiend staged an attack against Camp McCarran during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. Though NCR repulsed the Fiends, they suffered heavy losses in the process. After the NCR's victory at the dam, the followers of the apocalypse were pushed out of Old Mormon Fort during its occupation by NCR forces. NCR further encouraged them to leave Outer Vegas entirely, and the followers had no choice but to comply. Good Springs saw more trade along I-15 after NCR gained control of the Mojave Wasteland. But with that came a heavy burden of the Republic's taxes. Hmm. Some old-timers, unable to handle the cost, were forced to move on, grumbling all the while. Cass survived to see the NCR flag flying proud over Hoover Dam, and thought for a moment, this is what a hero must feel like. She was about to tell the courier not to get too proud of himself. Then she figured, he knew that already. That night, Cass kicked in the door of his room to celebrate, only to find the man on the bed was an NCR soldier whose barracks had been destroyed. 
He was cute, though. So after having her way with him, she got the hell out, leaving an empty whiskey bottle as a note. As she walked along the dam in the night, she felt drunk, content, and happy to be alive. Which to her was the whole point of it all. During the Battle of Hoover Dam, the Great Khans quickly evacuated Red Rock Canyon and headed north and east into the plains of Wyoming. There, they reconnected with the followers of the Apocalypse and rebuilt their strength. Bolstered by ancient knowledge of governance, economics, and transportation, they carved a mighty empire out of the ruins of the Northwest. Thanks to the Courier and Lily, a cure for the nightkin schizophrenia was found shortly after Dr. Henry's experiment concluded. Nightkin and other super mutants in the wasteland flocked to Jacobstown, and the town became known as a haven where a mutant could find peace. Lily continued to take her medicine at half doses, and although she remembered her grandchildren, her mind remained muddled and confused. Eventually, she parted ways with the courier and traveled west, seeking the remnants of her past. After the NCR victory at Hoover Dam, a temporary truce between them and the kings blossomed into a full-scale relief effort for the people. While the NCR made repeated entreaties that Freeside join the Republic, the kings steadfastly maintained their independence. After Ray's brain was transplanted into Rex's cybernetic body, it took Rex some time to adjust to the old scrapyard dog's memories. Eventually, Rex's mind settled peacefully, melding his own memories with that of long travels with old Lady Gibson. Shaped up by the courier's advice, the misfits distinguished themselves during the Legion's attack on Camp Golf. Mags was finally promoted to sergeant, and the rest of the misfits received an official commendation. They continued to serve with distinction for many years. Though Novak was a low-priority target for the Legion, many of Novak's citizens died in its defense. In the weeks that followed, several bright followers returned to Novak to help restore its defenses, allowing it to remain independent of NCR. With the dam firmly in their grasp, the NCR turned its attention towards wresting the correctional facility from Powder Ganger hands. The Powder Gangers are no match for the battle-hardened troops of the NCR, and summary execution awaited the Powder Gangers who managed to survive. After the majority of the Vault 19 Powder Gangers joined the Great Khans, the weaker members scattered throughout the Mojave Wasteland. Though a few managed to erase their past, most never survived the journey. After Hoover Dam, Sheriff Myers runs prim with his own style of frontier justice. He deals with most folks fairly, but now and then someone winds up dead with little to no evidence against them. And so the courier's road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes. Or does it? The war has changed. Now then, show me the credits. Fallout, New Vegas. Project Director, J. Serpentine. It already established I don't know what I'm talking about, so let's not dwell on it. <laughs> Larry Fitzporty, <Fitchport>, Liberty. <laughs> Dar darn sins, Wary Hilden. Mickey R. Shop a Baby Strolling. Can I get with a more projection? Okay, less intensity. Now split the difference. Jason Lord, Fader. Dreams slow you down. Test of scenes, <laughs> cowgirl. Electricity is ruining America. <laughs> okay, I might have chosen a good perk. Joe Sembria. Let's all follow Rogers' lead and set our units to one inch. Brian Brenz Menzi. Don't you know who I am? 
Scott Scotty Evans. Push the button, Frank. Jason, Mr. DNA Serrano. Roger Cochain. Come on, Richie, to do what? Shane the Butcher of Anaheim, Johnny, Paul the Weapon Iron Fish, James Subterian <laughs> Aficionado, Ed Lippin learns like a bounty. When jumping, come on, lunch to me. I swear, I don't touch it. David Lyon to P. It's like you're moving in slow motion. James Simply James. Yeah, we make fans. Maybe it's one gods can make. Mega Megatron. Oh, is that Haran's dish? <laughs> These references are everywhere. Don't you know I'm Loka? Space Dinosaur. I'm only playing when I don't want to be. Mega Megabytes. Sydney, Detroit. I've been home since Tuesday. My poor starving kitty. I was a drug. I always kept a solid grip on the floor. What else? Seth? Admiral McSeppington. <laughs> I think it's my curious gnome theory. Sean Skipper Stewart. Marion Defense is all men is what? Justin IT Il Papino. Andro Duck <laughs> John and Jin the Mad Penderous. Tastes like burning. That's for I don't know if these people like, I had so much time to actually change all this stuff. It's making me laugh. <laughs> I don't have time to read all this. <laughs> I'm not kidding, it's actually making me laugh. Reproduce. <laughs> I am sorry to. Ah, oh, man. Uh. Yes. Um. Yeah. Can we go back to religion? Because that's where I'm starting from, right? Just to save myself time, and I don't want to worry about repeating any of the Madre, I'm just going to skip to the perfect ending. I'm going to skip the entire thing. Dead money. Best ending. The survivors of the Sierra Madre thought about gathering at the fountain and waiting for the courier. In the end, the call of silence made them uneasy, and the fear of turning on each other made them hesitate and leave the goodbyes unspoken. The radio message of the fountain was enough for them, and there was no need to add another farewell on top of all they had suffered. Don forgot himself, as did the voice that raged within him. After their passing, a new voice spoke within the mutant shell. It was difficult for the voice to remember the two it once was. There was the beast, dog, consumed by hunger. And the other, in reverse, the one consumed by control. Both were driven by need for the other. The courier brought them together somehow, joined the two into one. All that happened at the Sierra Madre was a faint memory to the new personality, like a flickering light in the clouds of the mind. The new voice did not think of the courier again until the Battle of the Divide reached his ears. The battle between the two couriers, beneath the torn skies and the old world flag, each bearing a message for the other. And the mutant 
prayed the courier that had saved him had been saved in return. Dean Domino, entertainer, singer, thief, explored the Sierra Madre not long after he was rescued by the courier. Once he left the theater, the Sierra Madre recognized him as a guest, and many doors opened to him. He had to admit it had been built to last. During his search, he came across the final records of Vila and Sinclair, and realized what happened the night the bomb was found. He felt strangely sad for a moment, and he had no idea why. Shrugging it off, his mind turned instead to where the courier had come from. Vegas still survived, out there in the Mojave. It sights, sounds, and casinos, ripe for the taking. So, giving Sierra Madre one last nod and a wink, he set off beyond the cloud to begin again. Christine, my mission complete. We found a new purpose as the Sierra Madre's warden. She watched over it silently. My choice, over time, and those people came to see her as one of the holograms. They would watch, silently, as she walked among them. At times, Christine thought of the courier, who had kept Elijah's hand in her throat. The courier reminded her of the other courier she had met in the big empty, and wondered if the two had found each other at last. She did not think of them again until she heard the legends of the Divide. The Divide, where the two messengers, the two couriers, fought beneath an ancient flag. At the edge of the world. Have you heard of the Sierra Madre Casino? We all have. The legend, the curses. Some foolishness about it lying in the middle of a city of dead. A city of ghosts. Beneath a blood red cloud. A bright shining monument. Reaching out. Luring treasure hunters to their doom. An illusion. A promise that you can change your fortunes. Begin again. Finding it though. That's not the hard part. It's letting go. 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 Wait a moment. Before you go, I... We... Hope you've enjoyed your stay. Farewells can be a time of sadness. Letting go. Difficult. As a guest of the Sierra Madre, you know that truth more than anyone. Frederick Sinclair believed one's life could be made anew every day. That fortunes were more than the wealth in your hands. Love. Life. Family. Those to care for, and those who will care for you. To those who know these joys, the Sierra Madre holds little they don't already have. Out in the world, beyond these walls. Listen. Do what I say. Refuse? Try and run? Disobey me? That collar on your neck will go off and take your head with it. Refuse? Try and run? Disobey me?